In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the wave trigger and show you two ways that you can quickly make a musical instrument using your own sounds without any programming whatsoever. At first glance, the wave trigger is similar to the MP3 trigger. It has 16 inputs that can be activated with buttons or switches or from digital outputs from another microcontroller such as an Arduino. It has a serial control port that's pin compatible with the FTDI BASIC, making it easy to connect to your computer's USB port. And it plays tracks directly from a micro SD card. But that's where the similarities end. Rather than using compressed MP3 audio, the wave trigger plays uncompressed 16 bit 44.1 kHz audio. That's CD quality. There's no need for compression when an 8 GB flash card can hold over 12 hours of uncompressed stereo audio. More importantly, the wave trigger is polyphonic meaning that it can play and blend up to eight or more wave tracks at the same time. These tracks can be started independently and can each have their own volume. 16 tracks are assigned to the triggers, but you have access to up to a thousand tracks through the serial control port. The wave trigger has two outputs, a true line level stereo eighth inch output jack and an onboard mono two watt audio amplifier so you can drive a speaker directly without needing an external amp. The trigger inputs are individually programmable to allow you complete control over how they behave. In addition to normal and transport controls, volume up and down, triggers can also support pause and resume. Most trigger functions can be assigned to work on either one or a range of tracks, allowing you, for example, to pause and resume specific tracks while letting others continue to play. All options are set using an init file, and we've provided an open source CROT platform utility to create this init file for you. Now, to demonstrate polyphony and some of the triggering options, I'm going to quickly show you two ways to make a musical keyboard. The first requires nothing more than a wave trigger and some switches. I'll point out here that I've installed male and female headers into all of the wave trigger connector locations to make it easy to prototype, and I suggest you do the same. Also, this is a pre-production wave trigger, which is why it's green rather than red. Now, I pulled the keyboard unit from a very cheap musical instrument toy and modified the wiring so that each of its 13 keys is a separate, normally open contact closure to a common ground. I'm going to connect the two commons to the wave trigger ground pins and the normally open switch contacts to the first 13 trigger inputs of the wave trigger. There, now each key is a simple contact closure to ground on the first 13 trigger inputs. First, let me quickly demonstrate the concept of polyphony. This particular flashcard contains some music tracks, dialogue tracks, and a sound effects track. I can start the music. Overlay the dialogue as January pounds the and add the sound effects with ice and snow. Birds huddle and, and I can continue to overlay and blend up to eight independent stereo tracks in this fashion, each with their own adjustable volume. Okay, for this demo, I've sampled one octave of a piano using a VST instrument plugin and created 13 WAV files, one for each note. I've edited these files to remove all the silence at the start of the note and each file contains the entire duration of the note plus some silence at the end. You can download these samples from a website address that I'll provide at the end of the video. Next, I'm going to set up my trigger inputs using the Wave Trigger Init Maker utility. I've connected the keys to the first 13 triggers, so I'll leave these as normal functions, but set the type to level. This tells the Wave Trigger to start the track when the trigger input goes active and stop the track when the trigger goes inactive. And because I've sampled the piano using the full dynamic range of the sound, I'm also going to reduce the volume of each trigger so that we don't clip when we play chords. That's it for the first trigger, and I'll copy these settings to the next 12. Now, just for fun, I've included a backing track for a well-known song and have assigned it to trigger 14. I'll reduce the volume of this trigger as well, again, so we don't clip when playing multiple tracks. I'll leave this one as edge triggered so that it will continue to play once we start it. I'll also set trigger 16 to the stop function so we have a way to stop the backing track. Finally, I'll enable the onboard amplifier, which is disabled by default. Now, save the init file directly to the flashcard, and let's try it out. One, two, three.
Now, what if you want more than 16 keys on your keyboard? The Wave Trigger serial port can be set to receive MIDI, which means you can use any MIDI controller to access up to a thousand stereo tracks. To demonstrate this, I'm going to recreate a classic 70s tape replay instrument called the Mellotron using the Wave Trigger, an Oxygen 8 MIDI keyboard, and a SparkFun MIDI breakout board. I'll use the Wave Trigger's 5 volt output to power the MIDI breakout, connect the grounds, and the MIDI signal output to the Wave Trigger serial receive pin. Then I'll connect the MIDI out from the Oxygen 8 to the MIDI in of the breakout. I located a complete set of Mellotron samples on the web and I've chosen the classic three violin sound. I converted each sample to 16-bit stereo, added some silence to the end of each note, and saved all 35 files to a flashcard. The wave trigger maps MIDI note numbers to track numbers, and the first Mellotron note is G2, which is MIDI note 43, so I named the files in musical order starting with track 43. All I need to do in the init file is set the serial port to MIDI and enable the onboard audio amp. The wave trigger scales the volume of each track according to the MIDI velocity and the MIDI volume controller adjusts the wave trigger's output volume. Now, this is exactly what a raw Mellotron sounds like, pretty gnarly. For performance and recording, it was almost always processed, so I'm going to add a stereo reverb, and you can hear how awesome this can really sound. Finally, the wave trigger assigns a separate range of notes for each MIDI channel. So you can even switch between instrument sound sets on the flashcard by simply changing the MIDI channel from the keyboard controller. That's it. You can get more info as well as download the sound files I've used in this demo right here.